welcome. I am Karen Wendell and I run the travel club here at the Barnstable Senior Center. I know some of you very well and uh, I've recently met uh, some of you folks recently, so I'd like to welcome you all to our presentation on an unforgettable trip uh, for 10 days, September 5th, 2014, traveling to England and visiting Barnstable, Plymouth, London. It's going to be a great, great trip. So uh, I'm going to turn things over to uh, Paul O'Meara from CIU Tours. Paul has put together a nice presentation for you. We'll show you, uh, we'll show you some information about the trip, and then we're going to be here to answer any questions uh, that you have about the trip. So welcome, and Paul. The, the intro. Same stable thing. So this feel like a good way to see everybody. Um, my name is Paul O'Meara. I'm, uh, I'm what most of you guys don't like in the summertime. I just kind of come down for the weekend and then I go back to Stoneham. <laughs> so I try, to, I try to come down in the winter so that you guys will like me when I come down in the summer too. Um, my name is Paul O'Meara. I'm the Director of Sales for New England for CIE Tours. So we're kind of, in this case, we're the company behind the company. Um, we have offices in Dublin and in Cardiff, Wales, and then here in the United States we have an office in Morristown, New Jersey which is our U.S. headquarters, and we handle all of the work behind the scenes for hundreds of trips just like this every single year. Um, we're the largest uh, Irish and Scottish tour operator on the planet, and we're a close second for most of the rest of, of England and Wales, but what we do really well is we customize trips based on a group's specific needs. And in this case, with Barnstable celebrating 375th and the tying into Barnstable in England, yeah, it was a good fit to have somebody like Karen and CIE Tours work together to put together um, an itinerary that, although it, there is going to be some focus on the 375th anniversary um, happenings, it also is a great way to see the country with experts. Um, so I put together a little presentation. Um, it won't take too, too long, 15 or 20 minutes, just kind of showing you day-to-day uh, -day kind of what's happening and, and showing you some images that are a combination of ones that I've taken and ones that some of the rest of my sales team have taken. About half of my sales team is actually in right now in Bath, which is where the trip is going to be for two nights and they were in Stonehenge today. So, um, so we do this quite frequently uh, in terms of either traveling or doing presentations. But I wanted to show you, I was coming down 132 off the highway and and, and this is what I saw. I figured I would pull over and take a little, uh, a little picture of this right off the side. This is right when you get off the highway on 132. And I, I actually drove by it and then realized I should swing back around and take a quick picture because this is really what this trip is about. Um, we do a lot of trips for, um, for, Catholic, um, for uh, Catholic churches and we, we bring people to certain areas on pilgrimages. Um, this was actually one of the first that we've done in this part of England, the southwest part of England, where it was really about celebrating two cities that are twinned together. So I thought this was kind of a cool introduction, and I had to swing back around. I, I was saying, Karen, I, I kind of cut off some people going towards the airport and had to swing back around and get a picture of this. But this really does speak to kind of what the trip is all about, uh, the 375th anniversary of Bonsable here in the U.S. This is on the flyer. I wanted to make sure it was up here for all the folks in TV land who don't have a chance to be here tonight who will get to, to see what's included. This is actually a, 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 a bare bones uh, image of what's included in the trip. We try to include as much as possible in the upfront cost. Um, what we try not to do is we try not to have you show up and then have all kinds of extra expense. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we included as much as we can um, including motor coach, round trip motor coach from here on the Cape up to Logan Airport. So there's no worries about where you're going to park in Boston or how you're going to get to, to the airport. So we included round trip motor coach up to Logan. The flights are on Delta Airlines. It's nonstop from Boston to London Heathrow. So it's an overnight flight going over and then uh, a, a daytime flight coming back, but it's nonstop from Boston to London. All of our people for CIA Tours, we've been doing this for 82 years, all of them are born, raised, and trained locally. So the tour directors are not folks from the Cape or from Providence who happen to live over there now. These are people that were born, raised, and trained in that part of the world. And they're your experts on the ground, and they're going to be with you the entire time. All of our motor coaches um, are luxury motor coaches, leather seats, big, huge picture windows. Uh, so we try to take comfort in it. 
and, and make it the most paramount part of what we're doing on the border coaches because there are some companies that don't. Uh, eight nights hotel accommodations. The trip is 10 days, nine nights total. The first night being on the flight over, obviously, if any of you traveled to Europe before, that's the first night. 13 meals included, so breakfast every day, including as soon as you arrive in, in London. Um, the first thing we do is a group breakfast together to kind of ho hopefully get everybody over the jet lag. All the attractions, admissions, and sightseeing is all included. You'll never see tickets. You'll never have to pay out of pocket. Everything that's on that day-to-day -day itinerary on the flyer is all included in the upfront cost. We do special flight bags, and, and part of what we'll do for this when it gets time for documentation is we'll have another event like this where everybody that's going to kind of get together sometime in the summer, and, um, and, and we'll talk about the documentation and make sure that everybody has their flight documents, and all of the taxes and surcharges. So really, what isn't included? So what isn't included essentially is if, if you're a big shopper, you're gonna to wanna to need to bring an extra credit card or two. Um, generally, we don't include lunches because English breakfasts are enormous if any of you have ever traveled before, and they're, because breakfast is included every day, uh, some people like to have lunch, some people don't. So we don't include lunches and driver and guide gratuities. And that's it. So everything else is included up in the upfront cost of this, and that's generally how we do all of our trips, whether they're customized or something that comes right out of a brochure. And all of this info is on the flyer that, that Karen created. So I created a little map. Um, this is actually the area of, of southwest England that you'll be traveling in. Um, we do about 20,000 people a year in, in London, the London and Bath corridor, um, because also in that corridor is Stonehenge, Oxford, um, Cambridge, so we do a lot of people in that area. What's unique about your trip is that because it coincides with the 375th anniversary, we also included Barnstable and Plymouth, which we don't sell a lot of. So this is a really cool, unique tour that, that even in a, a, a brochure that you have there with 44 tours in it, we don't touch Plymouth and Barnstable at all. So this is going to be a really, really cool, unique tour. So you actually fly right up here into London and continue on to Bath, Barnstable, Plymouth, and then end up back in London, and every day there's included sightseeing and meals um, and just exploring of that part of, of England. So we start in London, and the first thing you hit on the very first day is this, and hopefully we have weather like that. Um, September, by the way, have any been to England or Ireland? September's, a, from personally, September's about the best time to go. Um, I love June, July, and August. The weather is great, um, but generally it's a lot more crowded, um, and it's it's a fair amount more expensive to go in the summertime during high season. Personally, I, I think this falls great with the university, but the timing weather-wise is, is fantastic. Um, hopefully we get a day like this. September's a great month to go. Um, and the first thing you see right out of the gate is Stonehenge, which is about, uh, about 50 miles or so, a little less than 50 miles from London. Um, so we'll get a great, a great image there, and you'll be able to get some great pictures. Um, half of my sales team is actually there today, so I, I'm jealous of all the pictures they're posting. Um, the first stop that you make from London after Stonehenge and the other day, uh, the first two nights of the trip are in Bath. And Bath is an old Roman city. This is actually the original Roman baths right in the middle of the city. Um, you can't use these anymore for a, a bunch of different reasons, not the least of which is health reasons. Um, but you can tour it. And again, I had a whole uh, four or five members of my sales team sending me pictures of them right down here. Uh, we'll get the cathedral behind them and taking pictures today um, during the trip. But this is something that people from all over the world travel to see. These baths were built um, BC. So uh, we're talking about ancient, ancient artifacts here. And uh, Bath is just a fantastic city. It was kind of designed in the old amphitheater style. Um, that Rome was built in, and a lot of the buildings are kind of circular, and a lot of town squares. It's just a fantastic, a fantastic town, and you're there for the first two nights of the trip. So while you're there, um, not only are you there, that's kind of your home base for two nights, but the, the beauty of being in that part of England is there's a lot within 100 miles of where you're going to be. So you can be home based in a certain area, in this case Bath, and go to a place like this. This is the village of Castle Combe, which is a, generally year after year voted the prettiest village in England. This is in the Cotswolds. It's about 25 miles from Bath, and you're going to spend a whole afternoon here. Um, and this is just one little. This is actually an image that I took. Um, I was there last, the end of last August, 
and this is a, an image that I took. It's a fantastic little English village. Lots of little shops and, and, and restaurants and boutiques and, um, and pubs, and, and it's, a great, uh, it's a great way to kind of get indoctrinated if you haven't been to this part of England before, to kind of see what a quintessential little English village is. And, and this is it, um, really. I probably took 100 pictures in, in this little village, and I don't think I took a bad one. It doesn't, didn't matter the angle. I helped that it was a sunny day, but it didn't matter the angle um, or, or what I was shooting. It was, uh, it's a fantastic spot. And I think you're gonna see a lot of this on this trip, but this village is pretty fantastic. And you'll spend about a half a day there. Um, and then, obviously, there's much more included. I'm just touching on kind of the basics, the day-to-day -day itineraries on the back of the flyer. From Bath, you'll actually move southwest to Barnstable. And I put together a few images of, of Barnstable, but um, there's so much more to come in terms of what the itinerary holds for that area. I know that the town is working on um, some individualized plans related to the 375th um, that, that I'm not privy to just yet, but everybody will know all about them soon enough. Um, but the town of Barnstable is fantastic, and I have been there once. And I spent a fair amount of time. This actually is the town of Wells. So this is um, Bishop's Palace, uh, Bishop's Place right behind St. Andrew's Well. And again, this is a, a Roman, kind of like Bath is, a very Roman designed city. And this is right on the way to Barnstable. Another thing that you'll see, obviously. Um, and again, on the way, Glastonbury Abbey. Um, this is not the one up in, what is there, one in uh, Marshfield or somewhere. There's actually Glastonbury Abbey, kind of a, a duplicate, I guess. This is the original, and you'll spend a couple of hours at Glastonbury Abbey. And, uh, this picture doesn't do it justice. I guess the clouds kind of get in the way, but that's a fantastic spot as well. Seventh century Roman, so most of it was built around that time, and you'll spend some time there, not too, too far from Barnstable. Um, I actually spent some time in this building. This is actually right in the center of Barnstable, and you guys will probably spend some time there as well. This is the Barnstable History Museum. So this is right in the center of town. If you could pan the camera around, it's almost like a roundabout rotary right here. The museum is right here. Um, I don't have relatives that, that uh, originally came to Barnstable or on the Mayflower, but the history in this museum is pretty fantastic. A lot of great information um, about the town, even about uh, Barnstable down here in Cape. Um, but the town itself is, is great, and you'll be staying in Barnstable for two nights as well. I just want to say that sure. that actually looks like our school administration building. So maybe our school administration building was copied off of that huh. building. Yeah. <laughs> this, and this building, it actually, it's, it's, I wish I had a, a wider angle. This is, a, this is an image that I took too. I wish I had a wider angle. This building actually extends out at about this height over this way. And when you go in right here, this is the main, they have a little open sign. You can see it there. This, the, the, the museum part is just one of the main rooms there. And then there's a couple of shops and there's a restaurant around the other side. But yeah, I guess it wouldn't surprise me. This is. We're talking about so many towns that have relationships here, and, and you'll see them later on in the trip. Towns that aren't even listed on the itinerary, like Truro and Falmouth, and you know places that all have relationships to here on the Cape. But, um, but Barnstable's a, a, a great little town. I think you guys will, will like it. Not including all of the cool things that you're going to set up for me, I suppose. Um, and this is the hotel you guys are staying at. I, generally, I didn't include a lot of property pictures because. I think hotels are great and we choose all decent quality hotels, in, in your case high quality hotels, but it's not why you're taking the trip. In, in this case I wanted to include it because when we did the first small presentation, um, I got, we got some oohs and ahs about kind of the location. This is the Sant and Sands Hotel, the big white building in the back there. That's actually the hotel, it's, it's in a, a, on the Devon coast and this is Sant and Sands Beach right here. This is about three miles of fantastic beach and in September, if you get sunny weather, you get some unbelievable sunsets in this part of England. And uh, just off to the right, you can't really see it, but just off to the right is a fantastic golf course. And because you have a little bit of free time uh, in, in Barnstable, um, hopefully a little bit of free time once the other itineraries are announced, um, you can actually tee off. Uh, it's a public course. It's about 80 pounds around, so about 120, 125 US. But it's a fantastic ocean course. And this is actually one of my favorite hotels in this part. It's not right downtown. But you're there in September, and, and I know that Karen and me and our director of group sales kind of went back and forth about should we put something in downtown and have you stay right in the middle of town in Barnstable, or should we put something out kind of in a more resort area? And I think the choice was made for the resort area because you'll have a motor coach and you'll be able to get back and forth that way. This is about seven miles from the town center. Um, and again, this, this is one of my favorite hotels in that bar. The 
the Sun Sands Hotel is the name of it. And while you're based in in um, in Barnstable and doing activities around the 375th, you also have the time to see other parts um, of the country. And this is one of those parts. There's some fantastic castles and some fantastic um, uh, points of interest that you'll be able to see. And you'll be able to spend time in the Dune Valley and, and uh, Dockmore National Park. And this is all kind of right around the Barnstable area. So because, again, you're traveling in areas that are a little bit more, uh, a, a little bit further away from a city like London, Trips like these aren't full day trips anymore. They're two or three hours, so you're not sitting on a motor coach. To give you an idea of travel, if you did the entire route that you're doing for the entire 10 day period, it's only a little over 400 miles. So you're not spending a lot of time on a motor coach. You're spending a lot of time seeing and doing, which is kind of the point of you going versus sitting on a, on a motor coach if you do some of the mainland Europe tours. This is the sunset from the pool deck. There you go. That's the Sun Sands Hotel pool right there. You can see the beach off to the left. And the, the sunsets are, are fantastic, um, especially in September. I think you'll get some, some pretty awesome. I, again, I don't usually include hotel slides, but I wanted to include that one. So from Barnstable, you're actually going to head further southwest down to Land's End. If you see Penzance in the bottom, the very bottom left, um, you're going to spend some time there in Land's End, which is the very end of the, of the peninsula down there. Um, and you're going to go sp spend some time down there, and you see Truro and Falmouth, and, and eventually you'll end up in Plymouth. But before you get to Plymouth, you're going to see things like this. This is Titanial Castle. Uh, this is reported to be the birthplace of King Arthur um, in the 5th century. Uh, nobody really knows for sure. Nobody knows for sure actually when he was born. So I, I guess anybody else's guess is as good as mine. Um, but this is, this is pretty fantastic scenery right here. And this is... You know, I include this to show you that you're going to see stuff like this every day. This is part of what your trip is. Um, so it's really a good mix of really great um, sites that you want to see, lots of great pictures, but also lots of tie into the 375th um, in terms of activities. And this is Land's End. This is about as far as you can go without being in the Atlantic Ocean. If you, if you hop in a boat right here, I don't know how fast your boat was a few days later, you'd be in Newfoundland. Um, so that's, that's about as far as you get. You, you'll see some great, there's actually a lighthouse just off the water. It's kind of like Boston Light. Um, it's about a mile offshore. It's pretty, pretty fantastic, and especially on a windy day. It's one of those, if you've ever seen the images of the waves coming in and hitting the rocks in front of the lighthouse and the water completely splashing over the lighthouse, that's what you see here in Land's End. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most hospitable for a boater. Um, but it's fantastic if you have a great, a great camera with a good zoom lens. There's some fantastic stuff to see down there. And then you swing back and you end up in Plymouth. Um, Plymouth is one of my, I, I've only spent a couple of days there. Plymouth is one of my favorite towns in this part of the world, mainly because um, they have a fantastic waterfront kind of promenade. Um, they, they decided about 15 years ago that they were going to create um, a waterfront walking area. Plymouth is a historic port city. It's one that has a great shipping industry, but it really wasn't one that was real hospitable to folks that wanted to spend time down on the waterfront. And um, and now they have a, 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 a now they have a a fantastic waterfront promenade with restaurants, with shops, and you you can walk it. And the hotel that you're in is called the New Continental in Plymouth. It's actually the largest room wise. It's the largest hotel in Plymouth, but it sits on the highest point of the city. So you have some, and I'm going to show you an image of it in a second. I wish that I had a better image of it, but I'll show you the hotel itself. It sits on, on, a, on a, a hilltop in the center of the city, and it looks down. The entire side of the hotel looks down over the lighthouse and the waterfront. And you're in Plymouth for two nights, so there's going to be a lot to see and a lot to do. Um, I know there was discussion about meeting some... Some, some prominent folks that actually live in Plymouth and being able to set something up um, in the hotel. So there's a lot of stuff still being worked out in terms of the 375th celebration. But I think you'll love the town of Plymouth itself. Again, you're there for two nights. This is the hotel itself. Again, it's called the New Continental. Um, for you folks that, um, that, that aren't 100% sure of kind of the brand, this is actually a Millennium Hotel. So there's a Millennium Hotel in Boston. Um, just opposite Faneuil Hall. It's a high quality hotel on a scale of one to five. It's a four, um, as most of our hotels are. But this hotel, as you can see, there's really no images around it, and that's because it's on one of the highest points in the city looking down over the waterfront. And again, two nights here. So this would be 
uh, your seventh, uh, your sixth and seventh night on the trip will be in Plymouth. And then the journey back. Um, just like me, when I head home tomorrow, hopefully you'll head up through Plymouth, through Weymouth, and hopefully not as far as Portsmouth, but you'll end up back in London, and then uh, the, the city fund begins in London. Um, we're doing as much as possible in London while still giving you a little bit of free time for your final two nights in England. Um, but before you get there, just outside of London is the Hampton Court Palace. Uh, Hampton Court Palace is one of the most popular uh, tourist stops on this route. It's a fantastic building, old Tudor. You can actually stay in some of these two original Tudor buildings here, and we've arranged for a private tour for the group to see the grounds and the gardens. For anybody that knows the area, this is the River Thames here that flows right up into London. So if you're about 15 miles or so, a little less than 15 miles from London, um, depending on traffic, half an hour or 45 minutes. But we're going right by this, and you'll spend a little bit of time here. Um, kind of the calm before the storm, I guess we'll say, right? A little bit of gardens, a little bit of old Tudor buildings. And then next, you're in London. And the final two nights of the trip are at a, at a property in Kensington called the Copthorne Tower. It's actually walking distance from Kensington Palace. It's about a quarter of a mile. Um, for anybody that knows London and knows the two, Kensington High Street is directly across from this hotel. And Kensington High Street is on the Circle Line, which is the main tube line that runs around London. And you do have some free time in London. And the tube is such a great and easy way to get around. And, and you're, at, you're at probably one of the, the most accessible tube stops in the entire city is right outside the front door. So it's easy to get around. Um, you're about a half mile from Harrods. So I'm not sure how, long, how much you like to walk, but you can walk right up um, Kensington High Street and cross into Knightsbridge. And Harrods is right down on the right hand side. Um, in London, we have, there's lots of stuff we have planned. We have um, enough free time for pubs and for excitement. Um, this is the, the eye of London. Um, very, my, my 12 year old was not scared of it, my wife was scared of it. Uh, it's about 300, a little less than 300 feet tall until the, the, a new structure called the Shard was built in London. It was actually the highest point in, in all of London. Um, but this, that's a fantastic place to see the city itself. On a clear day, you can actually see up to Wembley, which is on the outskirts of the city about eight miles away. Um, you see in the background on the right hand side of the of the river, you have Big Ben, you have House of Parliament, uh, Westminster Abbey is just behind that. Everything that you can imagine you'd want to see in London, you're either going to have time to see on your own, or we're going to include a tour, um, which we have on the itinerary on the last full day. We're going to include a tour of the city so that you can see it all. Um, one thing that I really like in the city, um, there's a lot that I like in the city, um, but I like it more than most because it was my 12 year old's favorite place in the entire city of St. Paul's Cathedral. And we're actually going to do a private tour of St. Paul's Cathedral for the group inside. It's a, it's, pictures don't do it justice. Um, it's a pretty fantastic spot. Um, my 12-year-old loved it as soon as she walked in. It's uh, about almost 250 feet high in the middle. Uh, took about 100 years for this version to be built in the 1700s. There's been something on that site for about 1,000 years. And St. Paul's Cathedral is fantastic. And, and this is a case where we already have a, a tour set up. It's already included. This is something that if you try to do on your own, it's about 15 to 20 pounds a piece. Again, it's something you don't have to worry about. It's all included in the upfront cost. And you'll see that throughout the 10 days. But St. Saint, Saint Paul's is fantastic. And, and we're going to try to do fireworks for all of you. I'll, I'll go over there myself if I have to do them and light them off the Tower of London here, uh, the Tower Bridge, rather. Um, but th there is so much. Have any of you been to, to London? I know a few of you probably have. Yeah. It's um, everybody that's been there and, and tells you about it and tells you about the things you can see and do, um, probably underestimate what you actually can see and do. Um, I, I've been there probably maybe 10 times. I've probably spent 30, 35 nights there total in the last 10 years. Um, and I feel like I, there's so much of the city that I haven't seen. But the places that I do see, I like to go back to again and again. This image um, was actually taken, for those of you that have been there will know this, but. This image is actually taken from the Tower of London, so the Tower of London actually is behind you in this image. Um, I didn't take this, although I wish I did. I, I could probably sell it. That's a pretty cool image. I think that was actually leading up to the Olympics in London um, a couple of years ago. But London's the final stop, two nights. We actually ended with a really, really cool pub dinner for everybody, so kind of an informal way to kind of recap the trip and, 
and, and uh, rehash some old friendships and, uh, and finalize some new ones, hopefully. Again, same as I had at the very beginning here, here are the inclusions in the trip itself. Um, memories for a lifetime come free of charge. I I throw that in there for you guys. Um, and again, we're kind of the company behind the company. Our entire job is to make sure that when you arrive, that everything is set up a certain way according to what the town and all of you guys want for the 375th. Um, we have decided almost nothing on this trip. We worked with, with Karen and with the town on a few particular items, but most of this has been decided by people in the town that are part of this 375th, and that's really what we're good at. So um, I, I'm, I'm just a phone call away from Karen, um, and I know that, that Lynn and some of the folks are, are also available for questions. The info is on uh, the flyer. Generally, final payment will have to be in sometime around the middle to the end of June, June 15th, I believe. Um, and we're going to fill this trip. Um, we actually have, most of our motor coaches have 53 seats. We sell 48 of them. Um, we're going to sell 48 seats on this trip. Um, if we can sell them for some other unnamed towns that aren't anywhere near 375th anniversary status, I'm pretty sure that we can that we can um, do the work behind the scenes to to make that happen for the town as well. And I know that that uh, Karen and some of the people from um, from the town of Barnstable are going to be on the trip. I'll, I'll let others kind of speak on that if they want. Um, but again, we're, we're the experts in this part of the world. We don't sell. South America, we don't sell North America, we don't sell Asia, we don't sell Russia, we sell England. Um, and I think that everything we put together, I think will be a great, a great thing for all of you guys. So again, on the flyer itself, all the information in terms of, um, in terms of contact information. Price is uh, 3750 double, it's a, um, a little bit more. We actually do have some single rooms, and I know that Karen um, is gonna go through the process uh, for folks that don't wanna pay the single supplement. Um, to match up with other folks, um, which is never an issue. We do that on almost all of our trips. That's never an issue. We have, um, on most trips of 40 or 45 people, we have four or five or six people who are traveling by themselves that, that don't need a single room. They just need to be matched up, and I think that we'll be able to, um, we'll be able to do our best to accommodate that. Um, but there you go. Any questions? No. Basic questions? Um, you could probably do this with me, I have a feeling. <laughs> uh, if you don't want to come back with the group. Is there an option to stay? Yeah, yeah, the question was if, if you don't want to come back, um, is there an option to stay longer? Definitely, yes, we actually do. It's just that for us, it's just an air deviation. Um, we're holding group air, and you would essentially not be booking the group air, you'd be just booking something at whatever the current rate is. Um, as, as, long as, um, as long as we know in advance, and obviously you're not paying for the entire trip, then yeah. That's never an issue. Just let Karen know. Um, we have the ability, we just, internally we deal with it, it's just a deviation from the group. So if you do what the group's doing and then want to stay an extra three, four, five days. And we actually have, as a company, we have about 10 tours that leave from London. If you wanted to do something further north up into um, the Lakes District and Liverpool and Scotland, um, and then over to Ireland, we have the ability to do all that. Or if you just have friends that are local, we can just do the air separate. Yep, no problem at all. And I just wanted to say that when we were creating this trip, and, and I have to give a lot of credit to Karen for uh, bringing Paul to the table here, we actually had a brochure from our 1989 celebration of the 350th. And we said, here's what they did in 1989. Can we recreate it today? And they helped us um, do as much as they could to, to get it. Um, but there were a couple of people from the committee that wanted to make sure that gardens were included and, and things that would be of interest. So we you know, did a little massaging and they did a tremendous job. But when we were first organizing this, there were people that were saying, I don't want to fly and get on a bus and start touring right away. Is there an availability to arrive a couple of days in advance so that I can get my um, legs, you know, get adjusted to the time frame. And so Karen has um, worked with Paul to give us two nights beforehand um, so that pe people who want to arrive earlier 
have that option available to yeah, them. That, and that info is, I don't believe, is on the flyer, but Karen has that information. Yeah, it only says two pre-nights in London. But, but As an option, yeah. But it doesn't say what. That's right. not a bad idea. Yeah, and the, and the main reason I think, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, the main reason why we didn't include the price for that is because it completely changes the air itinerary, and the air really is dependent upon when it gets booked. Um, for the group, it was different. If we grab the group space, we know what the pricing is, we're already holding that space. But if you come two days early or leave two days late, you're booking essentially what the going rate is, and you never know what that is until. Sounds like you, you travel a fair amount, so you know how it works. <laughs> Any other questions? You all need passports, you know that. I heard they put in some restrictions on visiting Stonehenge recently. Um, no, no, you know what they did? Um, they, they try to limit the, the timing during the day. Um, what was happening is um, they're a little bit further north in latitude than we are. Um, so what was happening is in Stonehenge, they were having mo full motor coaches from tour companies who aren't local and maybe don't know exactly how they should be doing this. Full motor coaches of people show up at 8 or 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night because it's late till 10 o'clock in the middle of the summer. The problem is, although this image is a pretty fantastic image of Stonehenge. If I could swing around with a 360 degree view of this, this is in the middle of a town. You can't have a motor coach running through a town at 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. So what they did is they, is they stopped the ability for motor coaches to show up outside of what, what this town would consider normal business hours. So you can be there from 9 to about 5.30 or 6 and later during the weekends and in the summer. But what they didn't want is they didn't want motor coaches showing up here with 40 people or 45 people at 10 o'clock at night, which is what was happening. So there isn't really restrictions as such, um, which, and, and in your case, this trip's not gonna have to worry about that anyway. This is actually the first stop after breakfast from the airport, so you'll get there right around lunchtime, give or take. The restriction I thought I had heard about was actually getting close to it. You are not allowed as close as you used to be. Well, there's, there's role, uh, and you know, I wish that I had a, uh, which yeah, actually you can see the folks here so you can't walk right up to it but that's been in place for a while i mean i've, I've been there probably 15 times and, and you can't you used to be able to get right up within 10 feet or 15 feet of it and now there's actually you can see it from the air it looks like a crop circle they actually have a circle designed around and the ropes are actually inside the circle so you can get these guys see the people on the left there the very far bottom left that's about as close as you get to it um, it's about 50 feet 60 feet yeah, sure, clarify that. Good point, yeah. Make sure passports are valid for about six months after. That's become more of an issue now. Um, I had that issue personally in Ireland. I tried to get away with it. Luckily, CIE is actually a, um, we're actually a division. We're owned by the Irish government. So I was able to pull a couple of Irish government strings <laughs> when my passport should have expired about four months after a recent trip. And they, they weren't going to let me in. So even if it's close, you want to make sure your passport's valid for a little bit longer. Um, pound has been fluctuating. Um, last I saw was about 151, 152 um, US for one pound sterling in, in England. Um, so their, their pound is worth more than our dollar. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about all the cool places you're going to shop. Um, think of what else. I think that, that covers most of it. Um, again, Karen is really the expert as far as this trip goes and anything that she can't answer uh, for all of you or, or anybody that you know that wants to travel, anything that she can't answer, I'm just one phone call away. I'm about 75 miles up the road in Stone, Massachusetts. So. Thank you guys for coming. I think that, you know, the next step is if you are uh, planning to sign up, certainly the sign up form, uh, it's on the back of your tour brochure. And uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. You want to make sure whatever you're giving me as your uh, full passenger name matches what's on your passport. It is very important if you're Mary P. Smith on your passport, that's what I need you to write in the line with Mary P. Smith. If it's Mary Patricia Smith, then I need it to say Mary Patricia Smith. Um, some real basic information that we're asking you for here to sign up. It's an initial $250 deposit. You do need to decide when you're signing up if you are going to take the highly recommended trip insurance or not. It's $179. That insurance covers your tour and your air. So 
So for $179, you're ensuring that if something happens, you're going to get your money back plus the insurance. Um, and any questions you have about this form, you can certainly give me a call. You can come by here at the Barnes & Senior Center, and I'd be happy to fill it out and answer any additional questions you have. So I'd like to, um, I'd like to certainly thank you, Paul, for coming and doing this presentation today. I'd like to thank all of you for coming as well. And we're going to be here for a couple of minutes answering any other questions you might have. Thank you so much. Yeah. I might be here longer than